I just got back a box from CGC with books that I got signed at the Baltimore Comic Con. Stay tuned as we open up this box and do a grade reveal. Welcome back comic book fans, this is Rusty again from Collector Auctions and today I've got a new CGC unboxing. This box right here contains four books that I got signed at the Baltimore Comic Con this year and I had them witnessed and sent off to CGC for grading. So I'm pretty excited about these books. These are all big keys that I got signed and if you follow my channel at all, you know that which books I got signed because I talked about it in the recap video that I did from the Comic-Con. Now, I do not know what the grades are. I resisted the urge, but I will tell you this. I'm kind of expecting the worst, only because recently it seems like CGC has been really tough on some of my books. Some of the books have been really good. Some of the books have been a little questionable. In fact, the last one I just did was a CGC unboxing from Rob Liefeld, and that New Mutants 87, I really disagreed with that grade, and I started thinking about it, and I'm wondering if it was because the other book that I sent was a brand new comic book, a mo very modern comic book, and did I get a grader that looked at these two books because of the age difference and really judged the older book harshly? I don't know. But all I know is that I have not been agree agreeing with all the grades that CGC has been sending back. And I just, I'm a little bit worried about this right here because these books have got a little bit of age to them. They were in really good shape. In fact, they had all been pressed and ready to go to CGC for grading even without getting signed. But still a little nervous. I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. But before I actually open up this box, guys, definitely, if you enjoy this kind of content, definitely hit that like button, slap the subscribe, and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my episodes that I put out each and every week, Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. All right, guys, let's get into the box. All right, guys, I've got the box. I've got the knife. Let's get into this thing. As I said, these are four really big key comics from a certain creator, and as soon as I show you the first book, you'll know and I'll tell you what creator that I got to sign these. I will tell you that I was not happy with my preparation work at the con because I had had multiple copies that I was considering getting signed by this creator and I literally was picking and choosing books at the very last moment. I mean, moments before I went up there, which book do I get signed? Do I get this one signed? Do I get that one signed? Because I had duplicates of several of these books in here. And I was hemming and hawing because I didn't want to get them all signed. I just wanted to get one of each of these di different books signed. And am I picking the right book? Am I not? And I literally changed my mind at the last second and in doing so part of I wasn't quite as prepared as I normally am when I go to a con to get books signed. Normally I have the windows cut in the bag and board and have a nice little window area for a signing and I didn't have any of that and I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just I had so much other stuff preparing for the con that I just didn't have time to get that done. So I literally had to go up there and take these books out of the bag and board be real careful with them. Give them to the writer. There's my first clue for today. Of course, if you saw the graph, if you see the graphic for the day's video, you know who I'm talking about. And I gave him the books, and and I took them back carefully. And I took the CGC witness over, and it took me a few moments, but I took my time and I put them back in the bag and board to give to him, and or to so he could witness it. And that was. A little harrowing that's not the way I'd like to do things because every time you handle those books like that you're risking a little bit of damage but as I said I thought I had done a good job on cleaning and pressing all of these I'm hoping for some good grades today but well it remains to be seen as we open up this got a giant piece of bubble wrap right there and we've got the four books right there and there's the invoice and again, I got these done at the Baltimore Comic Con, and these are the only books that I ended up having witnessed and CGC'd while I was there this year. At Heroes Con, I ended up doing a lot of books, and 
by the time I got to Baltimore this year, I really just like, I'm, I'm not, it's not that I'm over it, but there wasn't a lot of people there that I really wanted to get something signed and then graded. Now, I got a lot of things signed, but I didn't necessarily need a lot of stuff graded. But these books here, I did this as an investment to add value to these. These are books that are really good without signing, but with the writer's autograph on here too, they are definitely a much, even a much more valuable item. So we're just going to go through and we'll do the reveal and we'll see my reaction. Again, I have not seen this. I did not cheat by going onto CGC and checking out my orders on there. Yeah, let's just get into this. And I'm going to try to look down without doing looking at the grade. Okay, I see the... I think I've got it right here. Okay, I've got the back of the books. So I cannot see the see the grade without, or at least too easily. I'm going to cover up everything. As we do on this channel, I hold these like this. And this way, you guys get to see the grade as I get to see the grade. And as you can see, this is obviously an X-Men book. And immediately you should know who I'm talking about. We're talking about Chris Claremont. And this is a big book right here, guys. This is X-Men 129. And this book right here is a the first appearance of Kitty Pride, first appearance of the White Queen. Big book, first story in technically in the Dark Phoenix saga. This was a really good copy. I wish I could recall where I got this book. I picked it up earlier this year. I know I've picked up a couple copies because literally I still had multiple copies of a couple of these that I was considering to get signed. And I don't know. I definitely was trying to pick out the better of the two copies to do this. So let's just let's just hold my hold the breath. Hold the breath and let's see. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, you know my you know me guys. I want a I want 9.6s on my John Byrne X-Men. That's that's my number one goal of the year was collecting the entire John Byrne run on X-Men as 9.6s and I'm doing pretty good. I had this my original one of my original copies I got graded. I think I got a 90 92 maybe. I'm not I can't remember quite off. But I had picked up a couple new copies over the over this year. One, I think, was from Heritage. One was from a local comic book con. And I think that this is the one from the con. And that's not a bad grade, guys. 9.4 on that with a Chris Claremont. I'm not sure what the value is. I'd have to look everything up right here. But I can guarantee that's going to be pretty good with Claremont's signature. You can see it right up here. And the other thing you'll probably notice is that you don't see any special label on this. And that's because the current label that CGC is using is the Magneto image with the X-Men faded off in there. It's from the Jim Lee X-Men run from the very first issue. And I just didn't feel that was appropriate for these. I kind of wish they would go back to using the image from Giant Size X-Men number one right up here. I've got a couple of books with that on there. And I actually, that actually looks really good. And that would have been much more appropriate than that, that Jim Lee one with Magneto being in the forefront. So I opted not to get labels on these. But 9.4, let's take a quick look at this. I mean, this is a really nice copy. I mean, minor, very minor defects on the spine here. The corners are all super sharp. I mean, it's the point where you kind of question why you're getting a 9.4. I mean, okay, maybe it's not a 9.8, but why is this not a 9.6? I mean, the... Yeah, this is just a really nice copy. So, I'm happy with this. I guess I am, but I'm not as happy as I'd be if I would got that 9.6. All right, let's move on to the next one. And I, as I said... These are all going to be keys, and these are all X-Men books. All right, this right here, first appearance of the Guardian, uh, or Vindicator. This was the Weapon Alpha. This was the 
yeah, I guess the first appearance of, of that character, James Hudson. And great issue. Love this issue. Got this John Byrne artwork on here. This is the second issue with John Byrne in it. Uh, pretty much a very Wolverine-centric story. Adds to his origin a lot, right? And I ended up... I think I've picked up two of these this year. Again, I don't... Actually, I don't even remember the first one I got. But the... The second one I got, I know I, I picked it up off of Instagram. I, th I want to, yeah, it was definitely an Instagram show. I picked it off of it. I made a, I thought was a really good price offer on this book, and they accepted it. And I was like, okay, that was a little bit lower than I expected. I expected it to go up another twenty five dollars, but I thought it was at a really good price. Let's see, let's see how we did. Looks like it's going to be a 9.4 kind of day. That's not bad on this book. I may have to revise my 9.6 threshold on these because, honestly, it, it's getting expensive. These keys like this, like this here, to put that money in to get that 9... I mean, to buy a 9.6 is really expensive. I mean, it may be possible. I may be able to trade this for a 9.6 just un blue universal. I don't know. I mean, that would be an option. I actually, I'd be willing to do that, to be honest, just to get that 9.6. But 9.4 in this is really good. Again, these are big keys. So even a 9.4 is really good. So here we go. Claremont's signature right up at the top. And let's just take a quick look. Yeah, there is a f the faintest of a dog ear right there. Just the faintest of it. I don't know if that was enough to knock it down, but man, this is these are beautiful 9.4s. I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous. If you had this raw in this condition, you'd want that in your collection. This is just spectacular. But isn't that beautiful up there with that signature right there? Absolutely gorgeous. All right, we've got two books left. And again, just a reminder, every one of these was by Chris Claremont. All right, here's one of my favorite issues from the run. This is X-Men 141, first issue of Days of Future Past. And I remember back when I was in high school when this book came out. Actually, 81. Was I even on high school? I was about that time. I mean... It was in junior high, high school. I remember doing a recreation in pencil of this cover. I still have that. It was. I always thought that I had done a really good job of uh, re -ca or capturing this and doing a recreation of this just in pencil. But love this cover. Days of Future Past is an all-time favorite story of just about everybody out there. I had... I think I had three copies of this with me, and I went back and forth. And as you can see, this one's a new stand... Let's see how we did. 9.0. Oh, maybe I didn't pick the good one on this one. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. And as you can see, he signed down here at the bottom. To be honest with you, I didn't even I wasn't even paying attention to when he was where he was signing on these uh, at the time. So that's a disappointment. This is not the prettiest of signatures. That silver pen is definitely, looks better there on the camera, but is definitely a little more faded up close. But 9.0. I mean, there is some stress around the staples where you get just the slightest of a color break where the staple is, but yeah, that's, that's highly disappointing. So yeah, don't like that at all. Yeah. All right. Last book, last book. Let's hope we finish strong. Another big key in that run. This is issue 133. This is the first solo Wolverine story. Him on the cover by himself. And I had, again, multiple copies of this. And did I pick the right one? This is a direct version. I thought this was the best one, but I don't know. Let's just see how we did. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Okay, guys, I picked the best one on this one. Wow, that... Oh, my God. I... I don't even know what that's worth right now because I know everybody loves this issue. This is a this is a spectacular book. Wow, wow. 
Now, while I will say that the 141, I could see that it had some defects, like I said, around the staples, the other two books, to me, were just as good as this one. But, wow! Big win today, guys. I don't know what that's worth right now. Um, that's, that's awesome, because... You know, 9.8s are really good on all of these John Byrne X-Men. This is one of the reasons that I have chosen to collect the 9.6s because they're more affordable. I can buy those 9.6s on most of these books. Most of them, not all of these. In fact, these are all books right here that I've been trying to get that 9.6. 9.8 would is even better, but trying to at least get that 9.6 and they're a little bit too, even that's a little bit too much out of my price range that I'm willing to pay just for a graded version. I basically been trying to get that raw version and then get it clean and pressed and get it sent in. And as I said, all of these were going to go in at some point anyway. Um, man, that ex far exceeds what I thought was going to happen with this. If I remember right, I bought this copy down in Virginia Beach back in early February when I was on vacation down there with my wife, went to a store called, I believe it was called Trinity Comics, and I remember paying, God, what did I pay for that? I, I can't even remember, but I remember buying that, and I bought an X-Men 136, yeah, or is it 4? Which one is that? Which one is it? It's the 135, 135, it's the one with the giant, uh, the first full appearance of Dark Phoenix, I bought that, I bought both of those down there, and I thought both of them were spectacular copies. Definitely made a good choice on that one. Bad choice on the 141. I think I don't necessarily agree with the grading. Uh, the other two, I'm not necessarily definitely poo-pooing the grading, but I think both of them deserved a little bit better. Definitely not 9.8s, but man, what a winning comic right here on this right here on 133 that is spectacular so i'm pretty happy overall we'll see about that 141 i keep going back to that i may have to i doubt we'll get greater notes even with the 9.0 but it would be pretty much any more if there's a lot of value in it being able to get a break grade bump i have considered putting sending them back in the cgc and letting them work on the books one time and then do a regrading I've had a little bit of success with that with the Alex Ross books I sent in, but I'm, I may have to consider that on the other books here, but we'll see. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video because I certainly enjoyed this unboxing. I'm glad I got to share it with you. If you like today's video, definitely leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think. I, I'm... I'm ecstatic at this point, uh, at least with this one. Um, the other ones, eh. The 141, no. The other two, okay, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. In fact, it might be that level, like I said, I might just have to settle with that 9.4 on those and just go on with my life. Um, but, as I always say, if you're ever interested in any of these books, though, if you see these books and you're interested in them, hey, reach out. You can contact me at collectorauctions at yahoo.com. I will always listen to offers. And if you don't want to do it there, you can also DM me on my Instagram account. Now, I do offer a lot of books for sale on my eBay store and on my short box page. And those links are down in below in the description so you can contact me multiple ways if you're ever interested in any of these books or any of the books that i have currently for sale so enough of the sales pitch guys thank you for joining me today i will see you for the next episode i don't know what it's going to be yet but you know it's going to be about comics so i'm out of here have a great day and remember every comic has a story